Coming up next on the Retirement Halftime Show, dealing with the financial anxiety of retirement, learn one of the strategies that will take all the fear away, and answers and questions about Medigap insurance, why you may need a Medicare supplement plan. Then, Rejoice Gives Back, Andrea Moorhead reports on an organization that gives dignity and care to those who have nowhere else to turn. In staying true to the plan when times get tough, tips for dealing with adversity in the markets in life. From Butler basketball coach Thad Mata, now on the Retirement Halftime Show. You wouldn't play a game the second half the same way you would the first, especially if you had the lead. This is the Retirement Halftime Show, helping you maintain your lead in retirement. Welcome to the Retirement Halftime Show. I'm Heather McWilliams. Joining us is Alexander Joyce with Rejoice Financial. Alex, we are really, the retirees coming up are the first generation to be relying primarily on private savings versus pension, right? This is different from our parents, our grandparents. Why does this matter and what can people do to kind of ease their financial anxiety? The simple answer to me, um, you know, Heather, is, is plan first, invest later. Right, and I say it over and over and over. Financial planning is so important, and it's so different than the structure of like wealth management. And people think that, uh, in no offense to my audience, of course, you've heard me say this over and over as well. Um, when people come in, they have significant savings or very little, or never as much as they hope or think. Right, yeah. and um, and what I generally tell people is that is a pile of money. Yeah. And it's very difficult to, re- to retire on a pile of money because generally what happens, whether you have a Roth or you have an IRA or you have a brokerage account or a joint account or individual stocks, generally people, when I say and ask, uh, what piece of this portfolio do you want to start to use first to live off of, right? And they point at that one and I say, what is that one? And they say, well, that's the largest. And I said, what is your hope there? They said that it will last the longest and hope is not a strategy. Yeah. I think that um, when we when we look at um, income planning, mm-hmm. it, as you just mentioned, it is very difficult when we look back at like the rule of seventy two, yep. uh, or the or the four percent withdrawal rule, which is you know take four percent of the portfolio. Most people had a pension, you had social security with certainty, uh, and then you had your assets. Take four percent out of your assets, index it with inflation every single year, and the likelihood that you would not outlive your money was slim to none. Yeah. Well, the biggest equation, the biggest piece of that equation, if you will, is missing, which is the pension. Mm-hmm. And so I think that. Um, with inflation the way it is, <sighs> with market uncertainty the way it is, with future uh, uncertainty like tax reform the way it is, yep. it makes retiring today very frustrating, difficult, and uncertain. Right. And I think that one of the biggest things that we must do as individuals and as firms and as advisors is give proper advice. And I think we need to look at models and look at planning mm-hmm. before we just start rushing in and tax planning, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, before we start rushing in and start managing assets. Right, right. You do need a roadmap. And I think that's what's so important because as you mentioned, we don't know when we're going to pass, right? Um, Inflation makes calculations so much more difficult. Portfolios are volatile. So many factors play into this. They do. And that's why you guys are the perfect person. We do. You know, when I, when I, and I appreciate that. I mean, when we look at planning, there's a couple of things that are key elements, right? Tax planning is extremely important. Understanding long-term plans, right, with life change is extremely important. When I'm talking about longevity yeah. planning and what happens, um, not necessarily when you're called home, but when you are maturing in life, what does those dollars look like? When we look at income today versus income tomorrow, what is the what is the goal of the dollars we're using in the next five or ten years? Right, different, definitely differently than the, than than the bottom ten years, if you will. Mm-hmm. And we want to make sure that people feel fulfilled, right? We want to make sure that we make a lifestyle whole. When we do portfolio management or we do design or or uh, diversification, if you will, big words, um, we want to make sure that people first understand what we're trying to accomplish. We want to understand what the goal is for them. Then we want to build it. So a lot of times, to keep it really simple, and I've read a book that says this, a lot of people understand this, but we build two sides of a portfolio, which is your paycheck. Yes. Right? One that you can rely on. You can have sustainability and predictability. You know exactly what that looks like. Make your lifestyle whole. The other side is your paycheck. Mm -hmm. Right? So you want to play, right? Yes. And I think that people deserve to have freedom, and I, pe- I think people deserve to to feel like they uh, they've earned the right to do that. Mm-hmm. Life is short. Life is a commodity. The most most precious commodity that we have in life is time. Yes. And uh, we want people to use it, and we want people to um, to feel like they they can. Yeah. They can. I read a statistic. of current retirees, including 54% of female current retirees, said they found entering retirement to be somewhat or very stressful in terms of financial anxiety. That's more than half. 
Yeah, I think that uh, we, we, of course, we vision and we, we call the first half of the mountain going up the, f the first half of your financial journey mm -hmm. and you're saving, saving, saving. You get to the very top of this mountain, you're looking out and you are nervous, you are anxious. That is retirement anxiety. There should be coaches along that way to bridge that, to help them get down. Mm -hmm. um, just like any really strong mountain or a mountain climbing journey, like an athlete, right? This is real in life, two distinct phases of your financial life. And I think having that plan will create that confidence mm -hmm. and using us as a, uh, as, as a, you know, um, a person to help you get down along that uh, along that way, I think it, it creates peace of mind and confidence. And the more I talk to you, the more the takeaway for me is it is never too early to start planning right. for a retirement. Right. Guys, you need to be doing this now. You don't wait until your 60s. Come to a, a firm like yours that is holistic. You guys have everything under one roof and it doesn't cost a penny just to come in and see you. Thank you, Evan. Yeah. As always, great information, Alex, and we're going to have a lot more coming up in a few minutes. Next on the Retirement Halftime Show, making sense of Medicare's Medigap insurance. The key takeaway that'll make shopping for plans a whole lot easier. Then, Andrea Moorhead reports, this indie organization needs your help offering care and support to those at the end of their lives. That story coming up. This is the Retirement Halftime Show. Schedule a visit today. Call 317-903-9157. The journey to retirement takes many twists and turns. Don't take that trip alone. Let the team at Rejoice Financial be your co-pilot. The expert team of financial planners can create a roadmap that gets you to your goals. They'll work with you to create a financial plan that gives you confidence and peace of mind. Start the process today. Call 317-903-9157 or text 707-REJOICE. Rejoice in your retirement. You're watching the Retirement Halftime Show, powered by Rejoice Financial. You're watching the Retirement Halftime Show. I'm your host, Alexander Joyce. With me today is Angie Paisley. Um, she is our Medicare Director as well as Office Manager when it comes to our Processing um, Division. So it's really exciting to have you here. We're talking about Medicare. Uh, we've been talking about Medicare for a long time because in my professional um, experience and opinion, this is a piece that people settle only because it starts to really kick in at 65. Um, we don't plan for it ahead of time. Mm -hmm. We talk about being proactive. We talk about um, being an actively managed firm. We talk about financial planning and the legs underneath that stool. And I firmly believe Medicare um, is one that should be considered. Mm -hmm. It should be one that is uh, should be evaluated. And I think a number, really number one, um, you should work with someone that is educated on the topic of Medicare, Definitely. right? I am not, and that's why you're here. I am not, I know Medicare, I know enough to be dangerous. And that's why I'm like, <laughs> yeah, let me go get Angie because she'll better, right? And I'm like, where's Angie at? Um, because, you know, people, a lot of times they, they kind of wait, right? They wait until they're just right there at the door to retire because 65 is when a lot of people take retirement extremely serious or they mm -hmm. think they're behind or, or they're just ready to go. And so we know what part A, we talked about being hospital. We know part A being medical, right? And so we jump into this area where it starts to get really confusing um, the Medigap mm -hmm. plans, mm -hmm. right? Also known as the Medicare supplement. Yes. And so maybe give us some detail about what is that? Well, a common mis misconception with Medicare is that it's going to cover all of your health care. And unfortunately, that is not the case. Um, there's certain things that just simply are not covered. For example, only three pints of blood are covered. If you get a transfusion, there's a good chance they're going to need more than three. I'd say so. So we have what we call Medigap supplements, and what those do is they bridge the gap, um, and they take care of things that the insurance is not going to cover. That easy. That, I mean, it's it, that it, easy. You know, I think for you know for our show, what we like to do is keep things super simple. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if I'm talking to ten thousand people, an audience of 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 ten, right? I mean, we really want to t sheet this thing and keep it really um, simple because, as I've always said, we want people to do something with this information, make it tangible to palate, if you will. Because whether it's with your advisor or you walk in the office and you meet with us, um, we want to show you how simple it is, but we want to execute in a timely frame. Mm -hmm. um, but we want you to be able to understand it to the best. You can right definitely uh, i think medicare is one of those things when you start looking at the the differences between plan types the most common mistake misconception if you will misunderstanding is that um the meta gap or the supplement plans are what's the right word they are um they're all the same 
right? I mean, the, right. the government has made it so that every plan, whether it's N or G or the old F, right? They, they cover the same thing, but they all cost most of them from different insurance companies, whether mm -hmm. it's Humana or whether it's um, Aetna or whether it's Medico, right? They cost something different. Correct. And maybe kind of walk us through why that is. Yeah. So just to clarify, like an N is going to be different than an F. Each of them um, have different benefits that they offer, different coverages, and some of them at different levels. That pint of blood that I referenced might be covered at 100% under one plan, 50% okay. at another. Um, so, so they're slightly different, but as far as N to N or F to F, exactly the same it's just like putting gas in your car it doesn't matter where you go you're getting the same gas and do they uh, i'm going to interrupt you i'm just curious right i've heard that um a lot of these plans come with like additional perks like a gym membership mm -hmm. right that may be silly but is that true um not typically for the supplements uh you can find that inside of a lot of advantage plans and there are some some things that include it but not generally with the supplements they call those like well-being benefits kind of yes, like kind of like yes. incentives to stay healthy mm -hmm, right because mm -hmm. you know the average cost and the premium um, there's something uh, to be said about health, right? right and right. if you are being proactive about your health, you're able to keep premiums down and it's a benefit for the actuaries to be able to yes. account um, for the dollars and cents. And I mm -hmm. think that's um, that's interesting. We want to get into the weeds of how that works, but I think the most important thing, Angie, for our, for our viewers to really understand and the big takeaway for me is don't, just like we talk about social security, don't take it in a vacuum. You really shouldn't wait and delay. You should get educated. You should you take can. some time um, and, and understand the benefits, the, the dynamics of each individual plan and understand whether it's a supplement or an advantage with no premium and the pros and cons, the advantages. And that's exactly why we're here. That's right. We're here to educate people, make sure they, make, they can make sound decisions. Um, and, and that's what we do for the public. That's right. And the only thing I want to add on that, Alex, sure. quit listening listening to your friends. You're going to listen to your neighbor. You're going to listen to your cousin and they're going to say, I've got this supplement. It's the best thing ever. I'm on this advantage plan. Yeah. Best thing ever. Maybe for them. Talk to an agent. Make sure that you have the same needs, same medication, and it's the best for you as well. Angie Paisley, you're watching the Retirement Halftime Show. We'll be right back after this message. Coming up, determining your risk tolerance is pivotal in any investment strategy. The five factors to consider before making any financial purchases. But next, fulfilling last wishes, the central Indiana organization that sees its mission as a gift of humanity. You're watching the Retirement Halftime Show. Schedule a visit today. Text Alexander today at 707 Rejoice. Your family's health, wealth, and happiness is our mission. Hoping to have enough income to last through retirement isn't a strategy, it's a recipe for failure. Everyone needs a tangible plan. Rejoice Financial can help you get on the right path. Come in for a visit and let's discuss what's going on with your financial well-being. We're an inclusive team that won't offer judgment, only ideas on how to make your money work for you. Give us a call at 317-903-9157. Let us help you rejoice in retirement. You're watching the Retirement Halftime Show, powered by Rejoice Financial. Rejoice Financial gives back with Andrea Moorhead, highlighting the people and organizations making life better in our community. You're watching the Retirement Halftime Show. I'm your host, Alexander Joyce, and joined with Andrea Moorhead. She is our community impact anchor. And we are uh, involved in the community just doing interviews or, or um, going around talking to people in nonprofits and charities about um, their organizations. Tell me about it. Well, you know, one of the first stories that we did is phenomenal story, phenomenal people. And I know that you guys are going to fall in love with the people who you meet in this story. Um, I met with the group called Morning Light, and it is a home for people who are terminally ill, who are financially insecure. And their motto and their theme is, we are here to give you compassion and for you to die with dignity. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't want to talk about death. I mean, who, who really wants to talk about death? We're, we're about life. However, death is a part of life. And this organization is doing everything they can to make sure that those people who really need a family and need a home when they are near death, that they are dying in dignity mm -hmm. with empathy and compassion. So please take a look and be inspired by Morning Light. He could entertain us just about every day at the dinner table, <laughs> imitating various people, and his favorite person to imitate was uh, John Wayne. 
Norma Jo's son, Richard, was the light of her life. Illnesses, including cancer, took a toll on his body. But a local nonprofit filled his last 10 days on earth with comfort and peace in the heart of Indy off 52nd Street. It's a place you fall in love with because there's love here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Your tears. Yeah. Those are tears of, of gratefulness and happiness oh, and joy. gratefulness. Morning Light has been the extended family for end of life care, referred by hospice and hospitals. We always tell people, you know, when they're about to come here, it's not coming here to die. It's coming here to live. You still have time. You know, each day is a gift. Your generous gifts support 12 rooms. Financial donations help us keep this free and accessible to everyone. Um, We don't get any insurance. We don't uh, get any, you know, federal funding. And all of them are filled with natural light. You can see they have a closet. We have Jack and Jill bathrooms. This is where the hospice bed would be delivered. So everyone gets their um, medical equipment brought in by their hospice team. Each room. We have signs throughout the building. You're blessed, you're brave, you're loved, you're beautiful, you're kind, you're strong. Leads to a relaxing backyard garden. Miss Chris's room is right here and um, she comes out here and just, you know, putters and yeah. spends some time outside and in the sunshine. This is their home sweet home. They can feel that breeze, they can hear the birds and just engage with nature, which is uh, scientifically proven, you know, to be so healing to the soul at the yes, end of life. Absolutely. It's a place of bliss. It means like having a, a bunch of sisters around, <laughs> you know, always helpful. Patients receive three meals a day in 24-7 care by caring staff. You hire based on their heart. We what does have that mean? found that skills can be taught, but you have to want to be here. This is mission work. This is heart work. Folks just want what all of us want, and that's just to be seen, just to know that I'm a person. I'm more than a name. I'm more than a diagnosis. Joseph is a family friend of Norma Jo and Richard. It was home, and everyone here, you can just tell, it's it's what they do, and it's who they are. It's who they are. It's who they well, are. That's the difference, because people can do, but I can imagine that what you're really saying is, you could feel it from you them. You could feel it from them. And that it was real, it was real, and it was authentic. It was real, and to the point where Richard was here for 10 days, but the times that I came to visit Richard, I felt like I was coming to visit other folks here as well and it was like Richard brought us all together for a purpose that was larger than him thus here we are now here we are now Joseph answered the call to give back as a volunteer they could use your help too with cleaning feeding patients and other activities such as coloring or uh, Reiki or massage or aromatherapy music therapy I heard the story of someone who loves shrimp yeah. And one of the caregivers and volunteers came in and cooked a great meal for them and they were able to sit and break bread. And it really is, you know, the food is, is the currency to get to the right. act of conversation and relationship. When you think about those moments, does that give you that extra push and that extra challenge to come in every day mm-hmm. to make sure that more moments, more memories are made like that? Definitely. You can't really put a price on what it feels like to help somebody know that their time here wasn't for nothing. 800 souls have been served since 2004 with their names inscribed on bricks to remember, honor, and celebrate their lives. And imagine your impact by helping to grant a patient's last wish in life. He is uh, Russian and only speaks Russian. And so we found a Russian volunteer to come in. His only wish was to make amends with his son. Hmm. He hasn't spoken to his son in over 20 years. This is the power of volunteers. Uh, came in and facilitated a phone call between him and his son. And they were able to say, you know, I am sorry. I forgive you and I love you. Richard wasn't able to tell Morning Light about his last wish. He couldn't see and couldn't talk. What do you think he would have said? I think he would have said, job well done. Thank you. I think he would have said thank you. Thank you for your generous donations, giving Richard and others the gift of humanity and dying with dignity, surrounded by compassion and love from Morning Light. Knowing my son, I could tell when he was trying to do and Mm -hmm. trying to convey something. Mm -hmm. And he was satisfied here. 
He knew. He, he was. <laughs> he was satisfied here. He really was. We're so grateful for Norma Jo sharing her story about Richard. And when you see some of the tears that were falling down her face, it was because she was very grateful. She was grateful to Morning Life for all of the support and the services that they gave her family in the last 10 days of his life here on Earth. And if you would like to support, please do so. Go to our website. We have all the information for Morning Light right there for you to make sure that this institution continues to remain in our community for years and decades to come. And you're watching the Retirement Halftime Show, folks. Stay tuned. There's more show to come. Still to come on the Retirement Halftime Show, there's adversity everywhere you look. Butler basketball coach Thad Mata has advice on staying true to the plan, even through difficult times. The best coaches improve your game. Work with the best financial coach in the game. Alexander Joyce and Rejoice Financial can get your retirement game plan in order. Call 317-903-9157 to schedule a visit now. You're watching the Retirement Halftime Show, powered by Rejoice Financial. Planning to win. Coaching strategies for financial success. Here's Alexander Joyce and Butler University men's basketball head coach, Thad Mata. You're watching the Retirement Halftime Show. I'm your host, Alexander Joyce, and with me today is Thad Mata. You, you know, one of the things that um, we're all victim of is change in time, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And you mentioned, you know, 2007, 2008, different basketball teams, such as, uh, such as true with the market. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I mean, oh. it just is, right? Yeah. And, and you know, the, the, the economy we live in is so different, mm -hmm. right? And we haven't really put a stamp on this one that says we're going through a recession. Right. Um, you know, but you know, we know we did back in 2008, right? right? Going into 2007, we were we were kind of blinded by that as we are today. We'll kind of put a history stamp on this maybe sometime next year or the year after that. Of course, this will be not like 2008, the Great Recession, but, but this right. will be the great something, right? Right. As we go through these volatile times, you know, but, but as you mentioned, um, staying true to the process and getting better and the devil's in the details. Mm -hmm. You know, when we look at something like, again, you mentioned 2017 up to, to today, things have changed. Time has changed. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, players can get paid, right? right. I mean, that's stamping history, right. you know? I mean, so it's got to be harder. I know for us, you know, for me, it's it's difficult to keep our clients motivated mm -hmm. and it's, it's, it's difficult because as they approach retirement, um, there is a desire to start spending their money, mm -hmm. right? I mean, they want to they want to they want to do the the great things in life, right? Whatever whatever it is, whether it's um, taking their grandkids and family to Disney for the first time, we're putting together a big trip for a client that has you know, a family of like twenty, and mm -hmm. she just really wants to take everybody. He she really wants to take everybody, the whole family to Disney, and of course they want to fund it. They want to make those memories. That is a goal. Some want to want to want to do the Appalachian Trail. Some want to. Um, they just want to hold hands in the sand and watch the sunset. Some just want to relax and read a book. Whatever that is, right. whatever their goal is, uh, we want to make it come true. That is our goal. Um, and and the, you know, the difficult thing is, as they as they build this, they're so used to, you know, coach. They're so used to to training. Training is like saving, 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 not touching it, being disciplined, uh, you know, uh, whatever it takes to max out the 401k or max out the IRA or make, am I contributing enough? Do I have enough life? And all these concerns, but never really touching it. It's just there. Right. It's there for until. Yep. And now they, and, you know, and then they finally get to it until, and then they don't really know how to spend it. Or they have this tax trap because the money they've always saved has never been taxed. And now they've got social security pension maybe, yep. and they have a lifestyle and they don't know how to fulfill that. They have uncertainty with social security administration. So there's these, these bigger concerns leading up to that practice, if you will. And, um, and they don't know what to do. <laughs> they don't know what to do. But for, for me and for my team, uh, to bring that person in and encourage them and give them motivation that, hey, you know what, we can't put this together. We can, um, you can have that. Maybe we need to do something a little bit differently or re-strategize or let's change our focus, but um, don't lose sight, don't lose sight of the bigger picture and plan. But it's, you have to be that motivator. I'm sure you do as well, mm -hmm. right? I mean, how do you encourage the team? I mean, you've won, you won championships, right? I mean, how do you get to the team, the, the, to get to that peak level where it is the American dream right there in front of you. I mean, it just must feel amazing. 
It is, and 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 I think that goes with how I've always tried to live my life. You got to enjoy the process, don't you? And 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 know that uh, work hard, play hard, and yeah. and um, you know I think that's one of the things you see when when you have championship teams and it, is is they do enjoy the process. You know, mm. the, the winning the winning is is kind of a by, byproduct of the process. You're doing all the things you're supposed to do along the way. And we always tell our guys, we, we, the celebration's in the locker room after the game. You know, and, and, sure and that's, that. we're, we're going we're gonna to go for 40 minutes, and when, when 40 minutes is over, we'll come in the locker room and we'll celebrate. Right. And, and um, but I think that's, you know, getting guys, uh, I've, I've coached guys where they wanted the, the end to happen, they wanted to get to the NBA, and they would lose sight of what they needed to do at this particular moment. Right. I, I tell this story: uh, we we got beaten in the national championship game in 07 by Florida, and after the game, I called my little point guard over named Michael Conley, and I said, Michael, when we get back tomorrow, um, let's talk about your future. <laughs> he says, What are you talking about? He says, I'm I'm coming back to Ohio State, and I said, Oh, great. So he walks away, and I turned to the coach. And I said, He has no idea he's a top five pick. Wow. And he just played. He has no idea. Yeah. Where, where some guys, that's all they're consumed with. That's all they're thinking about the end. Yeah. When they're not enjoying the process and, and they're losing they're, they're losing things along the way. And, and I think that's something that, uh, you know, great teams. And, and that's part of my job as, as a coach is to get guys to enjoy that. No doubt. That's, that is a, uh, that's just phenomenal. Retirement isn't a game to lose. Your financial future hinges on every play. Follow Alexander Joyce in the Rejoice Financial Playbook to score the points that set you up for life. Win at retirement by calling 317-903-9157 and schedule a no-cost, no-obligation visit to get your retirement game plan in order. Don't lose where it counts the most. Call 317-903-9157 to schedule a visit now. Today's tip of the week for stronger financial health. Before you make any investments, it's important to determine your tolerance for risk. Investments that carry higher risk have the potential to generate more money for you. Less risky investments pay less. Your risk tolerance should correspond to these five factors. First, your age. The younger you are, the more risk you may be willing to take because you have more time to make up for any losses. Second, your financial responsibilities. If you are the primary earner for your family, you may want less risk since the financial well-being of your family depends on you. The third factor, your net worth. The more money you have, the more risk you may be willing to take. Fourth, consider the time frame you'll need the money back. You may be forced to sell when the price is low. And the fifth factor is your timeline. To make your investment funds last longer, you may need to move them from volatile investments. Once you've determined your risk tolerance, you're ready to start making investment decisions. Today's tip of the week for stronger financial health. Thank you for watching the Retirement Halftime Show. If you have questions about today's show, give us a call, send us a text, or go to our website. Most importantly, maintain your lead in retirement. I'm Alexander Joyce, and I'll see you next time.